All right, ladies, hello. This is part two of advanced bootstrap layouts. In the last video, I showed you how to use offsets. Um, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to have nested columns. What that means is we're going to have rows inside of rows. And that might sound a little crazy because uh, it is kind of crazy. But a really nice feature that this is going to let us have is it's going to let us create something that looks a lot like a sidebar. And so like on Bootstrap's web page, bum, 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 right here, um, you'll notice that they have this little sidebar over here. Um, but then they also have like rows and columns and content that exists on this side um, next to the sidebar. And so uh, this, what I'm going to show you next is going to be how we can have like columns and layouts over here that are inside of a bigger layout or a bigger column system over here. I'm not going to be showing you how to make this like stay fixed and glued to the side of the screen. Maybe that will come in a future video, but today we're going to start with nesting columns. And on Bootstrap's website, again, this is in the getbootstrap.com in the CSS section. Uh, they have this nice example here as well for nesting columns. And so let's say I have this guy. It's one column that is uh, has a class of column small nine. I'm actually we're actually going to put a row inside of that that has its own little sections that can change within that bigger one. Okay. And so as the screen changes, we're going to see. Um, we're going to see these guys changing a little bit. So that's small. Um, when we get to extra small, those two change. OK, so now back here and back to, sorry, it changes so much when I resize, um, back to our example. So in our example, um, I have a lot of content here. We're going to be looking at this row right here from the cool sidebar all the way through mini rows A and mini row B. OK, so the idea is my sidebar is going to hang out on the left hand side of the screen and mini row A is going to be on the right and mini row B is also going to be on the right. But they're both going to be next to my sidebar, my cool sidebar. OK, um, and so hopefully this will make more sense as we code it. And so if we look at the code for uh, nested columns. Let's go ahead and uh, expand this you're going to see that I have all of this stuff inside a row. Boop, boop, boom. Um, but I have, and I have my divs set up for you, but I actually have not added any of my column classes yet. So we are going to have to do that ourselves. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I want this cool sidebar to be in, um, to be on the side. And so I'm going to have it do this only on um, small screens and higher. So for my class equals column extra small and 12, but then on small and bigger, I would like for this cool sidebar to take up maybe three columns. Okay, three columns. Then I want the rest of this content starting with mini row A and going all the way through these paragraphs in mini row B, I'd like all of that to take up the, remain near, the remaining nine columns on the small screen, medium screen, and large screen. Okay. And so with that being said, we are going to need to add a new div that surrounds mini row A through mini row B. Okay. And so I'm going to start right here after the end of the sidebar. And I'm going to add a div that has a class of column extra small 12 and column small 9. Okay. And so when I do that, I need to move the closing div down to underneath here. And then just to keep consistent with all of my nesting, um, tabs and patterns. I'm going to take everything in between that new div and I'm going to tab it over so that it is lined up and really clear. Okay, so now we haven't even done anything quite yet besides we've grouped the sidebar into a div with a small column size of three and we've grouped everything else into another div with a um, small screen size column width of nine. 
Okay, and so by doing that, we are going to see a change on the screen. And sure enough, my cool sidebar is taking up three, and then all of the remainder of the material is taking up nine, which is awesome. Okay, um, and that's what I want. However, I am not done yet. Um, I have these guys. This is a paragraph and another paragraph. Each, both mini row A and mini row B, have um, two other two sections inside of them. So this is one section, and this is another section. And I've already put those into dibs for you. So section one, section two, inside of mini row A. So section one, section two. What I'd like is for this little section here and this little section here to take up six and six columns. So be side by side, six and six, um, instead of going all the way across. Okay. Um, and now, so that being said, I need another row to go inside of this big section. Okay. And so I'm going to say these two things need to go next to each other. And since those two things need to go next to each other, I want to put them into a row together. Because if you remember, rows are divs that we use to group things together horizontally. Okay, so I'm going to come into my uh, code, into brackets, and under mini row three, I want to group these two divs together into a new, a new row. So I'm going to make div class equals row. Okay, and I'm going to end it right here. Well, I'm going to end it like right there. I'm going to take all of this, tab it over just to help be clear. And this is going to be the end of row A. Just like that. End of row A. So um, this is a brand new row with two divs inside of it. So that's the start. Now, I don't want you to get too confused with this next part because it's not as complicated as we can sometimes make it. So even though this entire like half of the screen is technically inside of a section that has a width of nine, um, this is a brand new row. And when you create a brand new row, you get 12 brand new columns. And so I don't have to like figure out these widths based on the number nine. Like I don't have to try and say 4.5 or whatever. Um, these divs are going to be belong to this row, which means that I get 12 new columns inside of this row. And so anytime you create a div class equals row, you're going to anything inside of that, you're going to have 12 columns to work with again. It doesn't matter how many rows you put inside of other rows. Um, you're going to be able to, to use these and, and divvy these up appropriately according to the 12 columns available. So uh, I want this to be half and half. So I'm going to make this have a class of column extra, oops, extra small six. And this one to have a class of column extra small six. And remember, whenever you put um, one column screen size class, if you don't include anything higher than that, then all of the other screen sizes are going to default to whatever you put for your smaller screen. So since I put column extra small six and I didn't put any of the other sizes, it's going to be column small six, column medium six, and column large six as well. Okay, and so whenever I look at the screen now that I've divvied this row up into six and six, I'm going to see mini row A. This is a whole, this whole thing is a row. My first section has a column extra small six, and the second section has a column extra small six. Okay, and that's going to work all the way down. So when I'm on my extra small screen, my cool sidebar, hey, cool sidebar, he has 12 for extra small, and this guy has 12 for extra small, but my little nested row here has six and six. So what we're seeing is this is 12, and technically this whole thing is 12, but my inner row here is still six and six. So that's going to stay the same. When I get to small, that's, oops. Whenever I make this a little bigger, I'm going to start seeing my cool sidebar in here. This is three, six, and six. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for my, um, so that's medium screen, large screen. That didn't look very good on a small screen, did it? Like this is my, this is my small screen. That doesn't look super good. So maybe, maybe I need to change that a little bit to make this not be so squished. Um, I'll do that maybe in a minute. But anyway, um, on my medium and on my large screens, this is three. This whole thing, this whole like section here is nine, but then my inner row has six. Six. Oops, I'm not very highlighting very good. Six and six. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing real quick to a mini row B just to visually show you how nice this can look. Um, and so, mini row B, I want these two divs to um, be inside of a brand new row. Div class equals row. I'm going to move this down to the end um, here. Oops. And then each of these guys is going to have a class equal to column, extra small, and six. Of course, you could add um, more diverse layouts than just six and six, but for the sake of simplicity in this demo, I'm just going to do that. Column, extra small, and six, and then boom. Um, this is what that looks like. So I have, this is in row, and this is another row inside of this, this section, this column section, and this entire thing is another row. Okay, and so you can come up with some really interesting, visually interesting layouts using nested rows or rows inside of rows. Okay, um, I would probably want to go back and change some of these numbers. So like maybe um, this is medium, only works for medium and higher instead of small, since the small looked really bad. Um, but that being said... Yeah, so on small, it looks like this, which isn't too bad. And then on medium is when I get my neat little sidebar. Okay, so that is it for nested columns. Um, tune in to the next video for some of these other topics. Thank you very much.